Okay, can you hear me with this microphone? Perfect. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure for me indeed to be here in this very special moment and speak to you. I know that your province is uh, the youngest province in this country, in Netherlands. This is the nation I respect and cherish so much for being hardworking, strong, innovative, but also because this is the only nation, or maybe one of the very few nations that can pronounce my surname in a proper way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, the people of this province, you must have been twice as hardworking and twice as innovative because you are living on a land which did not exist 50 years ago. And I know many nations who's got tons of lands, but they don't have any idea what to do with the land. I represent European Christian political movement, which is a European political party with a unique Christian voice in the European politics, exactly in the same way as your party, Christian Union, has unique Christian stance in the Dutch politics. And it was started 12 years ago uh, by a handful of very enthusiastic politicians. And now it grew into a network, or basically the biggest network of Christian parties and organizations and the individual politicians across Europe. We advocate spreading Christian democratic values across Europe as well as outside of it and support the basic and fundamental values as human dignity, as Christian values, as uh, freedom of speech and religion, as well as uh, inclusive economy based on concept of Christian understanding of human being. Being one of the fastest growing parties in Europe, we also have a strong impact over the European politics. And we opened uh, our office in Brussels last year and we are gearing up for European elections. And I do hope by the help of the Christian Union, by the help of the SDP and their success, we will become stronger in the European politics. And I'll tell you one thing, I feel straight away that this party has a future because how active the youth movement was here while debating and discussing some of the bits and pieces of the program. When I started talking about your nation, I mentioned two words, hardworking and innovative. But no matter how hardworking one or two nation might be, it's not enough to face the problem and to solve the problem that Europe is facing at the moment and to make Europe a better place to live. We all see that at some point, at some moment, Europe, U uh, European Union uh, made the continent more stable, more prosperous, and we all benefited from that. But at some point, something went wrong. It is not happening anymore, and we all feel that. A lot of people in this country as well as in the other countries as well, feel disconnected from European Union as an idea and as an institution. People simply don't trust Brussels anymore. It's clear that something has to be done about this. But what? This is the big question. And answer we have here. And this is what I'm going to talk about in the rest of my speech. A new paradigm based on Christian understanding of human being is something that is needed to restore the relation and trust between the European institutions and between the people living in the member states. The basic of the paradigm is the realistic view that the human being is a relational in its biological existence, in its ecological de dependence and economic interdependence. Our relational vision is good balance between individuality and communalism. What is missing from the present EU is Christian understanding of a human dignity that affirms the unique value of every human being from conception to the natural death. A value that can only be understood in relation with each other. For example, if we understand how valuable the other person is, then we can understand the full value of our life. Human dignity in its all sense and for all the people should be back in the EU as soon as possible. The weakening situation of the family, fracturing society and 
decreasing solidarity are essentially the one of the reasons of the problems that we are facing today. It also affects social situation and generates distrust between the people and the European Union. Therefore, we need to support and promote stronger families. The family has always been the bedrock of society, and you know that better than me, that in the hardest times in these countries, as well as in my own country, it was the strong family that saved the nation. Uh, strong families generate stronger society and makes economy more stable and vibrant. But we have to make sure that it's not only the people who serve the economy, but the economy that serves the people. Unfortunately, nowadays, there is a tendency, and we all see that, that the weak and vulnerable become subordinated to the strong and tough. Often, the choice of an individual is regarded as the higher value and principle than responsibility or solidarity or mutual care. Sex trade and human trafficking is becoming a modern-day slavery in the 21st century, and it's a disgrace of the 21st century Europe. The EU should be more active about to solve this problem, as long as it is a multinational problem, instead of meddling in our affairs, starting from schools and kindergartens finished with health and some other issues that the nations can address lot better way than the EU. We need to have a EU that regulates less, but facilitates more. After seeing the episode of horses, which was a wonderful story, I can't think of anything but good leadership. The technically, those horses could have saved themselves. They can all swim quite well. But if not for that leadership of the two outstanding persons, nothing would have happened and could have happened. This is what I'm hoping the good leadership from Mr. Van Dalen, from Mr. Bas Belder and all the candidates that are now gearing for the European elections, this kind of strong and good leadership is needed and expected. And as a final note of my speech, I want to go back to my childhood and tell you a little story, something that my dad used to tell me a lot. When we would walk to the forest, he would look, at, look up at the tree and would say, look, what a wonderful tree, how strong, how beautiful. But remember, it's good for nothing without its roots. And he used to tell me that remember that the height of a tree is not measured from the ground, but from its roots. Human dignity, Christian values, inclusive economy, freedom of speech and religion has always been the roots that fed the European Union. This is why it became prosperous. This is why it became so successful. And when it went down, downwards, this was because the European Union rejected its own roots, fundamental values. Solution is very simple, more Christian Europe. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.